Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. So, with the honor system arriving in Classic World of Warcraft, I figured it would be pretty timely to make a video covering it for you. I'll explain how it works at a basic level, how to rank up, what rewards you can get, and the plus sides and downsides, and all sorts of stuff to hopefully give you a short but thorough look on how the system works as a whole. So before all of this, the only reward for killing enemy players is to ruin their day while you giggle maniacally to yourself. The game was re-released this way intentionally because that's how it was back in the day. It wasn't until patch 1.4 in April of 2005, which was six months after launch, that we got the PvP system in all of its glory. Essentially, from killing enemy players that aren't grey, or completing certain PvP objectives, such as capturing a flag in the Warsong Gulch for instance, you earn what are called honor points. The amount you earned, compared to everyone else, will give you a weekly standing, and based off of this, you're given a certain amount of ranking points, or RP as people call them. These are what you ultimately need to rank up in the rank 14 PvP system, as displayed here. Your rank will decay by 20% each week, so it's a constant grind, taking most players at least 3 months of hardcore play. It's not an entirely straightforward thing. Kills award you with a different amount of contribution points depending on the rank of the player killed. There's an element of decay to where if you kill the same person over and over, you get less and less honor. This is just done to dissuade corpse camping, but in a nutshell, kill red, get rank, and get gear is the basic gist of it. We could get into all of the equations behind all of this stuff, but it's a bit out of scope for what I want this video to be. I'll have a link in the description if you really want the details on that. Even if you don't know exactly how the system works, something you've probably heard by now is that it's very grindy. Probably the most grindy thing to ever be released in the game in its 15 year history in fact. There are 14 ranks total, you start at 0 and you go up, and players can typically get around to rank 10ish with fairly reasonable play maybe a few hours a day of PvP. However, anything past that starts to become extremely exclusive as the requirements to rank up become more and more demanding. Only a certain amount of people will rank up each week, and the competition at this point gets fierce. The system bottlenecks, and only a select few hardcore will be able to progress, and from this point forward it takes months of non-stop play to reach the ultimate goal, which is of course rank 14. Like, we're talking 18 hour days of straight PvP minimum. Many will attempt it, and those who choose to leave the house or bathe will fail, but a dedicated few will be able to push through and be able to say that I reached rank 14 in the recreation of a 15 year old video game, so people can awkwardly stare at them. But, what are the rewards for all of this you may be asking? Well, lots of gear basically. Pretty good gear as a matter of fact, for PvP at least. The PvP in the game, as you may have noticed, is rather bursty, so stamina reigns supreme, and armor that you get from PvP is typically loaded with it. The vendors for the Alliance are located right here in the Old Town in Stormwind, and the ones for the Horde are located right here in Orgrimmar. Note that some of these NPCs are behind mysterious portals that require rank 6 to enter. We'll cover those later. So, here's every single rank listed out, as you can see. But let's go over each reward for each tier one by one to give you an idea of how high that you may want to go. At rank 1, which is private for the Alliance and scout for Horde, you're able to pick up your basic tabard to represent your faction with pride. Note that this is essentially the title system in Classic. Whatever rank you have will appear next to your name or show up on an enemy player's kill feed when they slay you. And at rank 2, which is Corporal for the Alliance and Grunt for Horde, you get your PvP trinkets. These break various crowd control effects in Classic, and something that a lot of people forget is that they're different depending on what class you are. For example, the Warriors get to break Stun, Root, and Slowing effects, whereas the Rogues only breaks Charm, Fear, and Polymorph. Here's a handy chart of every single class's trinket for your convenience. At rank 3, which is Sergeant for both factions, you're able to buy a rare cloak, at multiple levels by the way. So even if you're lower level, there is a reason to do a bit of PvP on your way up. And in addition to this, you get a nice 10% discount on all goods and repairs from any vendor of your faction. A common strategy for many people is to stay at rank 3 or higher just for this discount, which is easily doable even if you PvP very casually by the way. At rank 4, which is Master Sergeant for the Alliance and Senior Sergeant for the Horde, you can pick up a blue necklace. 
and at rank 5, which is Sergeant Major and First Sergeant, you get your blue bracers. Again, just like the cloak, you can get these at various level ranges. Rank 6, which is Knight and Stone Guard, is where things start picking up in terms of rewards. Again, at this point, we're still in the casual range in terms of time investment. Most people will be able to reach this without going too far out of their way. But at this rank, you also get access to those special rooms that I mentioned earlier, called the Officer's Barracks. In here, you get access to a bunch more vendors, and it's just a cool little clubhouse to hang around, really. You can buy the second iteration of your faction tabard, and also some cheap healing and mana potions to keep in your back pocket. At rank 7, which is Knight Lieutenant and Bloodguard, you can finally start working on your armor set. Every single class gets a special armor set with unique set bonuses. Looks-wise, any armored type will be the same. For example, the Rogue set looks like the Druids, the Warrior looks like the Paladin, and so on. Across factions, they still look different though. There are six pieces total. The boots, the gloves, chest, legs, helm, and shoulders. And at rank 7, you earn the honor of purchasing the boots and gloves. The gloves for each class will have some sort of special perk. As you can see, the Warriors have a reduced cost to hamstring. Rank 8, which is Knight Captain and Legionnaire, you can purchase the chest and legs. And rank 9 is a bit of a break. It's Knight Champion for the Alliance and Centurion for Horde. And you can buy Battle Standard, which increases the health of nearby party members. And at 10, which is Lieutenant Commander for the Alliance and Champion for the Horde, you can finally finish the blue set with the helmet and shoulders. This is where I stopped in my original run 15 years ago. At rank 11, which is Commander and Lieutenant General, you can purchase an epic and unique black version of Etrace's mount. And another unique thing with this rank is that you gain the ability to talk in the World Defense Channel to rally the troops and coordinate PvP battles. The home stretch here is really 12 to 14 though. It's at this point is where the grind really becomes a grind, and it's where the men are separated from the boys or the men with no lives. And I don't say that to be derogatory in any way. You really do have to know life in here to keep ranking. It's just a fact. The whole system is designed for you to compete against other players, so naturally, on every server, the time invested is going to scale with how much time other people are investing, which is typically 18 plus hours a day. As you rank up in-game, you actually lose rank in real life with your relationships with your friends, physical fitness, and the ability to talk to girls. Bust out the hot pockets, because things are about to get sweaty. For 12, we have Marshall and General, and this is where you can start working on the upgraded, epic version of your PvP set, starting with the gloves, legs, and boots, and at 13, which is Field Marshal and Warlord, you finish off your set with a helmet, shoulders, and chest. And lastly, atop the corpses of 100,000 enemies, and thousands and thousands of Dorito bags and Hot Pockets is rank 14. Grand Marshal for the Alliance and High Warlord for the Horde. I would say that your girlfriend would leave you at this point, but come on, this is World of Warcraft, let's not kid ourselves here. At this rank, you're able to buy epic quality weapons. Of course, insanely powerful, more so early on before the higher end raids are released. All in all, from 1 to 14, you're looking at months of grinding getting more and more demanding from rank 12 and onwards, eventually commanding 18 plus hour gameplay sessions every single day. Rank decay, as I said, is a thing. Again, whether you rank or not is dependent on how many contribution points you earned versus other people on your server. You'll lose progress if you don't PvP enough, or if you earned what is known as a dishonorable kill. In the town hubs throughout the game, there are lower level quest givers and vendors and whatnot, and some of these NPCs will have their nameplates in grey and are labeled as civilians and will grant you a dishonorable kill when slain, which will have an immediate negative impact on your ranking. No need to wait one week to see the result, it happens right on the spot. And do note that if you're in a group with someone who kills a civilian, you still get credit for that dishonorable kill, even if you didn't attack. So, due to this, many players who are ranking will avoid any questing hubs like the plague, and keep their world PvP activities to safe zones such as the Blackrock Mountain or Dire Mall, for instance, where there's no civilians at all. And that's pretty much the Rank 14 PvP system in a nutshell, at the very basic level at least. Again, if you want details with breakpoints and equations and whatnot, check out the link in the description and it'll explain it better than I could. 
Overall, it's an insanely grindy system, so just know what you're getting into. Some people love it, and some people hate it. I personally don't care for it, and this is someone who loves just about everything to do with Classic, as you guys know. I think it rewards time investment, more so than it does skill. Which, hey, that's perfect for me, but it's just against what PvP should be for me. In fact, once Battlegrounds come out, and people get their pre-mates ready, you'll notice something called the queue dodging, which was rampant back in the day. Basically, you join a battleground, and you happen to get in against another pre-made, but they only have one person except the queue. This person is known as the scout, and if they see that it's a pug, they'll tell their team to join up, and if it's a pre-made, they'll tell their team to re-queue, and the scout will just sit out for a bit. This is done because once you leave a battleground, you get the deserter debuff, so if you use the scout method, only one person needs to sit out, and they just cycle who gets to be the scout. As for why this happens, it's all honor per hour. Typically, the honor grinds were either Warsan Gulch or Arathi Basin. You couldn't group queue for Altric Valley, and even if you could, that had problems with honor decay and killing the same players, like I said. With no timer in the Warsan Gulch back then, and AB having a 2000 resource cap, doing pre made versus pre made could end up with super long battles, and relatively little honor for both sides due to that decay. So because of this, it's much more preferable to just queue up against a pug to stomp him out real quick to maintain a high honor per hour, and thus rank more efficiently. Back in my day, I didn't have a choice because my faction happened to outnumber the horde like 2 to 1, and this was before cross realm battlegrounds, so our queues were hours long. If we got a queue pop, we had to take it, and oftentimes we'd see that scout queue up, and then leave, and then usually the battleground would just end because the game couldn't fill up with enough players in time. There's nothing more frustrating than waiting for a match for like 3 hours, and then watching that timer roll down because another pre-made didn't want to fight you. It was a mess, but you couldn't really blame them because that's how the system was designed. It wasn't designed to reward a competitive pre-made versus pre-made match. It was designed to reward stomping pugs over and over again, and adventure it's going to be the same with the re-release, even with cross realm battlegrounds. Plus, in general, it makes you compete against your own faction more than the enemy. You don't care about what the enemy faction is doing, you just want your allies to play less, which is just a fundamentally flawed system to begin with. And it's not even getting into the account sharing aspect, which was also rampant back then. With classic PvP, it's painfully obvious when someone is account sharing. Everyone has their own kind of strategy and style of playing, and out of nowhere you just see them play completely differently from one day to the other. It'll certainly be a problem in the re-release. Something that Blizzard will have to keep an eye on, but how do you detect people in the same household? People will cheat, you can be sure about that. So it's just another one of the many issues of the system, I think. But hey, I'm not calling for a change or anything. It's just the way it was, and therefore, that's how it should be recreated. I just want to make 100% sure that you guys know how everything really works, and some of the snakes that you will run into if you decide to do the grind. As for the fastest way to farm honor, at the release of this video we only have world pvp, and honor that you get from enemies is split depending on your group size. Solo you can get over 100, and in a 40 man raid group, typically it's in the single digits. It depends on a lot of factors, including faction balance on your server, but groups of 5 to 10 seem to be the most efficient in honor farming right now. It's not split too much, and you don't easily get overwhelmed. Keep in mind that the honor that pops up in the tooltip doesn't take into account the decay for killing the same player. A lot of people right now are corpse camping, or getting caught up in these giant zergs with the same people fighting over and over again, not realizing that they're getting zero honor. You need an add-on to track what you're actually getting, which at the time this video was made, none working ones exist. But as for when battlegrounds are released, like I said, the Warsan Gulch and Arathi Basin are going to be your go-tos. If your team is good and you're stomping a pug, these are the quickest battlegrounds, and they're fresh players for each round to feed into that meat grinder. Typically, most people stuck with the Warsong Gulch because it's capable of being winnable the fastest. And you also get items called Marks of Honor. Three for winning and one for losing, and you can turn these in for bonus honor as well as reputation for the respective faction, so battlegrounds in general are going to be your go-to for honor farming. World PvP around questing hubs should generally be avoided due to dishonorable kills. Be wary, because if people know that you're ranking and are competing against you, they can and will try to sabotage you. 
It was all too common back then for people to send a non-ranking guildie to join you in world PvP, and if you were dumb enough to invite them, they'd intentionally kill a civilian to dissuade you from continuing the grind. You can maybe squeeze in some world PvP in the Blackrock Mountain between queues, but it really depends on your queue times, so use your own judgement there. You may also choose to implement the queue dodging strategy that I mentioned earlier. It is lame, but hey, if you're grinding honor, it's the fastest way to rank. It's not against TOS as far as I know, so don't hate the player, hate the game. And of course, consumes are going to be game changers. Remember, this is classic. It's a time before everything was hyper balanced. You can go into these battlegrounds with Flask of Titans, Engineer, Sapper Charges, Faps, Healing Potions, Mongoose Elixirs, Weapon Stones. They obviously make a huge difference, and the fact of the matter is most successful teams will be the ones willing to invest gold into consumables. I want to end this video on a couple of fun facts though, for no real reason other than I thought they were interesting. Number one is did you know at first you had to keep all of these ranks to continue to use the items? Like the rank 14 weapons, you had to keep rank 14. If you deranked, they would automatically unequip. Luckily, they showed a bit of mercy with that though, and they changed it pretty quickly. Before the introduction of the honor system, Blizzard had a special competition where the person with the most kills before the system's release would be rewarded with this ultra rare item called the Contest Winner's Tabard. It's insanely rare to see one in the wild these days, but they're out there. Also, there's a plan for a rank 15 called City Protector that was scrapped before release. I talked about this before, so I won't go super detailed. But essentially, you're able to receive a special title depending on your race, and you'd also be able to teleport to your race's capital city. But that's about all I have to say. I hope you have a good understanding of the Rank 14 system now, its rewards, the time commitment, and the good sides and the downsides. And more importantly, I hope that you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.